problem-based learning and a three-year MD program. Let's get started. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for checking out another video here on the Next Gen MD. Now if you're new to the channel, my name is Gianluca and you are going to be watching the very first video in my series of six videos on how to get into a, an Ontario medical school here. Now what I want to try and do is highlight each of the six universities, go over all of the admission requirements and then what's generally considered um, an average applicant or even a competitive applicant to each university. Now before I get into what I'm gonna be talking about. I just wanna start off with a quick disclaimer to everybody. Okay, I am just a student. I'm gonna be starting at McMaster this year in August, but I'm by no means a professional on any of this stuff, okay? I've just been in some of the positions that you're gonna be in, uh, in in the next few months, and I thought that I'd share my experience that I've gathered with you, okay? So, disclaimer, I, I don't represent the universities. The universities haven't been in contact with me, and all of the information that I'm gonna be using for these videos will be linked in the description below, and also just for your information. These are all uh, statements that have been put out officially by the university on their websites and have been made public for all applicants, right? So uh, without any further ado, we are going to get started with the McMaster School of Medicine here today. So some quick facts about the McMaster School of Medicine. It's otherwise known as the Michael G. DeGroot School of Medicine, and the main campus is located in Hamilton, Ontario. However, there are two other campuses that are all part of the same university. There's the Niagara campus, and there's also the Waterloo Kitchener campus. And I myself am going to be starting off the Niagara campus. Now, other than the location of these campuses, there are no, there's, there's no difference between the curriculum that's offered at the different campuses. And then also the degree that you get after you finish the program is the same across all three uh, different locations. One of the main differences, however, is that the patient populations that you're working in, uh, working with, are going to be very different. Okay, as some people are going to be working out of the Hamilton hospitals, whereas the people at the Niagara region will be working out of the hospitals uh, in and around the St. Catharines area, and so on. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, another interesting, uh, interesting thing about McMaster is that the McMaster Medical School has a three-year accelerated MD program, whereas the other five medical schools here in Ontario have a four-year traditional style. Uh, of offering the medical school education. Uh, so for a lot of you that are thinking maybe uh, you're a little bit far behind or maybe you just want to fast track through medical school, this might be the best program for you if you want to go ahead and get your MD as quickly as possible. Uh, and finally, one other thing about the McMaster School of Medicine that I thought was very, very interesting and something that I really like about the school myself is that they are very big on the problem-based learning, the PBL style of teaching. And what they do supposedly, because I haven't started yet, is that they get us into small groups of about seven to eight people and we'll do two tutorials a week so they'll assign a uh, like a case study at the beginning of the week we'll work together with our groups and do our own research on it throughout the entire week and then on the second tutorial later on that week we will present our findings that we just learned about the case study okay and McMaster says that they go in and teach their classes in this way they offer this PBL to help students gain a more hands-on approach uh, when working with medicine so I am super excited about that now like all of the other five other medical schools here in Ontario there's gonna be two parts to getting into the McMaster Medical School so in the first half this is your pre interview part of your application you're gonna have to apply on the official OMSAS software uh, that, that's online the application system now if you don't know what OMSAS that says you've never heard of it and you want to know where to apply to uh, medical school here in Ontario, go ahead and click on this link here. Hopefully I'm, I'm doing this right. Click on this link and it will take you to my other video on how to apply to medical school here in Ontario. Now during your pre-interview part of your application, McMaster is going to go ahead and evaluate your application on three different things. That's going to be your GPA, your MCAT car score, and also your score on their CASPER test. And we're going to talk about all of those, those three things differently uh, and individually. Uh, however, they also then offer a bonus to people that have pursued a graduate ed education and also a postgraduate education uh, and things of that nature. So as stated on McMaster's website, which is linked in the description below, your GPA component is going to consist of 32% of your score that's pre-interview in terms of getting into their program. Your MCAT CAR score is going to count for another 32%, and finally your CASPER score is going to account for that final 32%. Now if you're doing the math and you're following along, you notice that there's still an additional 4%. So you will get a 1% bonus when applying to the McMaster School of Medicine if you have a master's degree, if you've completed a master's degree 
degree and you could go ahead and look that up on their website and then you could get up to an additional 4% which is a very substantial bonus if you've gone ahead and completed a PhD which is very impressive in of itself. Now from all the information that I was able to find it seems as though McMaster gets one of the highest numbers of, of applications every single year and from the, the information that I found it seems like they've got 5,000 applicants on average and out of those 5,000 applicants to their school every year they will then call in 550 of their top ranked applicants to come and interview with the school in March for an eventual position in the class. Now the McMaster class size is going to be around 206 people um, and on their website they go and say 203 but if you look at the class 2021 statistics you'll see that uh, you know 206 people got in that year. So starting with the GPA, so McMaster makes it very clear on their on their website that they need a minimum of a 3.0 out of 4 GPA in order for you to apply to their school. Now this GPA needs to be converted to the official OMSAS grading system, and I'm going to go ahead and link that in the description too. But basically, for example, I went to Ryerson, and we had a scale that went from 0 to 4.33, where an A plus was worth 4.33. So then when I had to apply to medical school, I had to convert my grades over, so my average actually went down a little bit in comparison to how my home school would go and look at my application. So even though a 3.0 is considered the bare minimum that you could go and apply to the school with, in other words, we call this the cutoff, where if your score is lower than that, your application wouldn't be eligible at all for the program. Um, however, we see that a 3.0 is not considered generally competitive for the school. The average matriculants that eventually go on and get into the McMaster program have a GPA of around 3.87. Now that's not to say that you need a 3.87 or higher to get in, it's just if you want to know what the average is and how you can be competitive in that section, then you, the score you're trying to beat is around a 3.87. Now I myself had a, a GPA that was lower than this. My GPA was around 3.63 once I converted it to the OMSAS system. However, if your GPA is not as high, you would always make up for it in one of the other sections, like your MCAT or your CASPER scores. Now in addition to your GPA, uh, what the standard is, you also need to know that McMaster is one of the schools that does not drop any of your courses at all when calculating your GPA. And they'll actually include your summer school courses as well, uh, as well as the courses that you took during the year. The only courses that do not get factored into the McMaster system when it comes to giving you a GPA are pass and fail courses. Now if you want more information uh, regarding pass and fail courses, always go ahead and check directly with the school itself. Now the second big chunk that McMaster is going to consider is your CAR score. Now you're going to go ahead and write the MCAT just like for all the other schools. However, out of the biology section, the physics and chemistry section, the CAR section, and the psychology section, only the CAR section will be looked at by McMaster. And I've actually met people who have done very, very poorly in all of the other sections except for CARs and have still made it into the program. So they do, as far as I know, only look at the CARs portion of your MCAT. Uh, now what we see with this is that McMaster has a firm cutoff for the CARs portion of a 123, meaning once again, if you get less than a 123, you can't get into the school. And they'll actually um, not consider your application for that year. However, we see that on average, the average CAR score of uh, the people who got into McMaster is around a 129. Now once again, this doesn't mean that if you got lower than a 129, you can't get in. It's that if you want to be very competitive in that section, you want a 129 or above. Now personally, for me, this section of the test, I was actually able to score a 131. And in my opinion, I think that this helped me make up for my uh, below average GPA. Now, some more information about CARS. Um, once you write the MCAT test, the test will be evaluated by McMaster and will be held as accurate for about five years. After five years, you'll have to go ahead and write the test again. Um, now, let's say you're writing multiple times. You know, I, I know people that have written the test the first time and not done very well, so they went back and rewrote the test a second time. And they've been on edge as to whether or not uh, the school would go ahead and count the second grade. Um, now, McMaster goes and they state on their website that uh, the most recent test will be counted as the grade that matters for that particular application year. So if I wrote the MCAT the first time and got a 125 on CARS, and then I wrote it a second time and got a 128, McMaster will only look at the 128 score and not the 125 score. However, if I wrote the first time and I got a 127, and I went back to write it again and I got a 124, McMaster will then go ahead and look at the 124 as that was my most recent test. Now for the third part of the application, and this one's the trickiest in my opinion. 
The Casper test was uh, developed by McMaster actually, and it's designed to test an applicant's soft skills. Things that you can't find on the MCAT or GPA, like your ability to be empathetic, or just to problem solve, or to be critical thinkers, or, or even just creativeness in general, are all going to be things that are assessed by the Casper test. Now this is a 60 minute test that you need to take every single year that you're going to go and apply to the school. But what makes matters even more complicated is that you will never get a score back from Casper letting you know how you did on the actual test. So in that regard, the Casper uh, test really is a little bit nerve wracking. Now in the future, I'm going to go ahead and make a video on how you could prepare for the Casper test because I knew that this was a test that I really needed to do well on. So I actually put a lot of prep into the course, uh, sorry, into the uh, studying for the test myself and I really think that it paid off. So keep your eyes out in the future for when I go ahead and make a, a video on the Casper test, but you can study for it and I highly advise that everyone take at least a month to about a month and a half to get ready for Casper. Now, after you've gone ahead and completed your MCAT and submitted your GPA and also done your Casper test and submitted that to the OMSAS software, you're going to go ahead and, well actually McMaster will go ahead and give you a percentile score in each of the categories. Now you'll never know where you stack up uh, in comparison to the rest of the, the applicants, but once you've gone ahead and been given a score by McMaster, if you've gone and completed a master's or a PhD, this 1 and 4% respective bonus will then be added to your overall score to give you a final application score out of 100 and once again you'll never actually see this score but then what McMaster will do is they will rank all of the applicants that applied this year and they will invite the top 550 applicants out of everyone that applied for an interview once again in March. Now one final note about the pre-interview score, if you go on to the OMSAS application system, you will see that McMaster says that you also need to submit letters of reference and complete the autobiographical sketch. However, when you go on to the McMaster website and find the section on how they select their candidates, there is no uh, point values given to reference letters or to the autobiographical sketch. And it's often speculated by some of us students on forums and in person what McMaster actually values from reference letters and the autobiographical graphical sketch. However, because there is no uh, hard and factual information on it, uh, I'm not going to speculate myself on this video. And as far as the general consensus from us students goes, uh, McMaster will only look at reference letters and the autobiographical sketch as part of a, a supplementary evaluation uh, in terms of which candidates get selected. And it's not really going to have an overall bearing on your score. So now for the post-interview part of your application and getting into the McMaster's Medical School. So the interviews are conducted in March, however interview invites generally go out in about January, the beginning to the middle of January. Uh, I actually got my interview invite, I think it was around January 11th, so expect it within the first one or two weeks of January. And you'll never know how you fared in terms of what uh, position you were in on the list for getting an interview. It's either you get an interview or you don't get an interview and McMaster will let you know even if you were not invited for an interview this year. Uh, some students also get um, a, a waitlist offer for an interview and this means that they were, uh, they were almost part of the 550 applicants that were given an interview that year, uh, however they didn't exactly make the cut. Now McMaster doesn't release how many students will get a waitlist offer, however from what we could see in terms of uh, people that post on forums, it seems that the waitlist for interviews is actually generally small. Um, however, the, the list isn't expected to move much because a lot of people do actually go to the interviews uh, in McMaster unless they really cannot make it that day. Now if you're lucky enough to be called in for an interview, congratulations, you've narrowed out a gigantic portion of the, of the applicant pool and you should be, feel very confident and very uh, proud of your accomplishment. However, once you get invited, there is officially 550 people left for a final class size of 206. So there is still a fair amount of competition. Now, I always recommend that everyone goes and practices for their interview well in advance and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a future video. Now McMaster actually uses the MMI style of, of interviewing, that is the multiple mini interview uh, and, and lucky enough for all of you guys I was actually able to go to the interviews last year and I remember every single one of my questions. So everyone take out a pen and paper because I'm going to tell you word for word what each of the 10 questions were that I went through um, this year when I was applying. So everyone get ready. And that's the final, that's number 10 for each of my questions. I hope everyone wrote those all down uh, because I'm not going to go ahead and say those in the future, you know? So, so make sure you took some important notes with that one. 
No, I'm totally just joking around, guys. I'm actually not allowed to say anything about the interviews uh, at all. It's a very, very uh, intense, secretive process, and we all go ahead and sign an NDA once we've gone to an interview. But I can say that it is something that you could prepare for, and I highly suggest that everyone takes the time and goes and practice practices different situations with their friends who are also going to be interviewing that year. Now once the interviews are done in March, uh, you're going to go ahead and sit and wait a few months before the decision comes out as to whether or not you were accepted into the program. Now th the decisions for McMaster and the rest of the schools in Ontario generally come out at around the same time and that's going to be within the first or second week of May. I actually forget the, the exact day but it's around then. And the months that you will spend waiting from your interview to the final decision are going to be some of the longest months of your entire life. But don't think about it too much. Try your hardest, cross your fingers, and hopefully everything will work out for you. Now the scoring in terms of who will eventually move on to the class, uh, the final class size from the interview is broken down as follows, and this again is listed on McMaster's website. It seems as though 70% of your final interview, of your final score, as to whether or not you got into the McMaster school is going to be based on the interview. Another 15% of your score is going to come from your GPA, and then another 15% is going to come from your CAR score, okay? Casper is actually dropped in the final calculation as to whether or not you actually get into the program, and it's replaced with your interview score, which makes sense because the interview is going to go ahead and test a lot of the soft skills as well, uh, very similarly to Casper. And then that, that's pretty much it guys, that, that's all that I have to say about how you could get into McMaster this year, this application cycle, if you want to go ahead and get into medical school. Now if you haven't done so already, please feel free to subscribe, leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see me make a video on in the future, and keep your eyes peeled because I really want to get out one video for each of the six medical schools here in Ontario before the end of this month. So I'm going to be trying to post as much as possible, but there's, there's so many things going on right now guys, and they are the best kinds of things having a great time right now, getting ready for school, and I'm so excited. So I can't wait to see you all at the next video, and I hope everyone has a great day today. Good luck if you're studying for the MCAT, and everyone take it easy. We'll see you next time.